Welcome back. It's Recovery Sort Of, the podcast, where we explore the struggles of life, the challenges of mental health and recovery, and the spaces between. We express our personal views on life here, and this podcast is not meant to replace medical advice or tell anyone the right way to live. This podcast is best used as a place of curiosity and questioning to accompany you on your journey. Be aware there is strong language. Here we go. As we get through this time of year, I guess it's always interesting for me to look at uh, my relationship with my family, my extended family, and what that means. Uh, my wife and I have talked a lot about that. Uh, coming from families with addiction and mental health hmm. issues, there's obviously not been the most healthy relationships in some of those areas, but yet we... It feels like society tells us we're supposed to hang on and maintain and and like take some of that shit because these people are blood relatives and because we owe them some. I don't know. I don't know. That's mm. where I get, you know, into my struggles is like, how much do I owe to these relationships because we share a similar bloodline? And how much is it, you know, that it's just not worth it and I should invest more into relationships with people that are like-minded that have shared goals and values for me being people like in recovery and people that are in you know more healthy spaces um so that's one of the the struggles we you know have been talking about with uh just getting through the holidays my families do a big christmas get together thing and it's always you know should we go should we not go why do we go what are we doing this for these are people that I see like maybe twice a year that I don't have a ton in common with. And every year you go, it's like a catch up sort of mm -hmm. reunion type thing. Mm -hmm. um, but if they were coworkers, I don't know that I would even put out the same energy to maintain these relationships right. <laughs> in that right. way. And uh, I don't know. It's interesting to reflect on. I still do it. Uh, we still do it, at least for my maternal side of the family even though my mom's passed on mostly out of remembrance for my mother because mm. she was big on that stuff and was one of the big uh what do you call it like foundational people in creating all that stuff and would be the one that called all her brothers and sisters she had a big family seven brothers and sisters um mostly the four sisters were really close and even though uh, geographically, they were kind of spread apart. There was still this obligatory thing to try to get together at least once or twice a year. And, of course, now we're all these generations out, right? Like, it's my mom, you know, and then us, and now we're all married with all of our kids. And now with some of those people, not us yet, but some of, like, my cousins, like, their kids have kids. Mm -hmm. So, fuck, I can't remember all these people's <laughs> names, you know what I mean? We're, like, four or five generations deep of, like, I don't know if they're even really cousins anymore. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and it's like, what effort do I want to put into maintaining these relationships with these people that, for lack of a better word, I don't really give that much a shit about? <laughs> well, and it's interesting, like this, the holiday season going through, you know, that Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's kind of time does highlight these these obligations that I think we feel a lot of in these societal family roles, right? Like, what is this role for this person and how close am I supposed to be and how much effort am I supposed to help and when am I supposed to drop everything for this one? I think they're there there's almost all year. a thing too, not to cut you right. off, but there's almost a thing too where if you don't have that stuff or you're not doing it, that something's wrong with you. Right, right, right. I, I guess it's like, I think it's there all year, but maybe throughout the year we, we discover ways and means to cope with it right like some people just move way the hell away from their family so they don't have to be in the day-to-day -day. but then there's still this oh well at christmas you're supposed to go back and visit or whatever the holidays and like i mean I i've seen this working with people who have been abused by their caregivers and mm -hmm. decided to cut off communications with them and the external pressure from other family members from their own friends is always but it's your father and, and maybe he's passing yeah. away and you're going to regret it. Like everybody always thinks they know that you're going to regret this thing or, or regret not doing this thing. And yeah, it's or say to so at like Thanksgiving, like say to so, oh, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? You know, that's a big 
topic people like to ask. Oh, uh, uh, me and my wife are just going to go out to dinner at a restaurant. Like yeah. people almost like, oh, like it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like they feel sorry for you that you're not, you know, surrounded by, you know, all these people. Right. <laughs> right. And, and so it's a good exploration of like what kind of questions, what kind of search inside of us can help us figure out where that healthy line is for that. Like when are we supposed to care and when are we allowed, so to speak, to say it doesn't matter to me or that effort doesn't actually reward me and I don't want to do it anymore. And I don't know. Yeah. And so Jen being uh, a little more healthy in some of those areas than I traditionally had been uh her family dynamics were a little weird and uh we had some things happen i I don't know i guess i can get into it fuck it i don't care um so when our kids were molested by her stepfather we didn't get a like ton of support from her family to be like yeah fuck that guy Mm -hmm. you know we're excommunicating him from the family it was sort of that traditional like well, let's just maybe we can talk about this and work. Do we really need to get like mm. police involved? Ooh. And you know, yeah. her mom was kind of like, "This didn't happen," and you guys are liars. And so there was a lot of fucking trauma there around some of that. And if it makes you feel any better, I think you actually shared this when you shared this story originally, like I probably three and a half years uh, ago. Yeah. So, so <laughs> you know, for her. And me, and I guess I hesitate because I don't give a shit, but this is my wife yeah. and her family no, dynamic, so I want to be a little totally sensitive to that part. Um, I wish I was better at that, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so she, you know, for a, a while had made a decision that she didn't want anything to do with any of them. Like, if, if these people were not putting our children as the priority mm-hmm. in all this, that they were not safe people to have in our life. Because if situations came up like that again... They were not going to protect our children or have our children's right. back. They were going to be worried about self-preservation, family image, whatever, yeah. you know, made that decision. And it was that was like really healthy for me to look at because I would go, oh, well, it's family and that's just the way things are. And you mm. just water under the bridge and you just move on because that's probably what would have happened in our family family <laughs> right, you know right. my family you know in this case it wasn't my family member that did the abuse so my family was all super supportive and they had come to court with us and did mm. things like that which for my wife made her much closer to my family like she respected and appreciated even though there wasn't that blood connection there was that emotional support that idea of like protecting our children for standing up for them and all that stuff. And so that meant more to her than this blood of even like her sisters and her own mother. Hmm. So, you know, that was a really healthy, like, I would say modeling of like, yeah, no, fuck that. Like, I don't care what your title, blood connection, whatever is like, there's, these aren't just words that mean nothing. Like they have values tied into them that trump whatever blood connection we have. Hmm. So I I think one of the times when I see this question in my life, and it feels slightly safe to explore with myself, uh, we go to my wife's um, family's Christmas gathering, which is kind of like a weekend long, not entirely for all people. They, They generally have a dinner Friday night, Saturday morning, the kids open gifts, Saturday afternoon, the adults open gifts. Saturday evening, there's more hangout, like, you know, play card games and stuff time. Sunday morning, there's a breakfast. That's kind of what it looks like. Not everybody stays for the whole thing or is there for all of it. Um, But, like, it started with her father's siblings, right? And it was their mother, the father's siblings, and then, you know, over time, their spouses, their kids, their families came. But now we're at the level of, like, generations out. Like, you're talking about, like... When when it was just her father and the siblings and the spouses, they knew each other pretty intimately. They could buy each other Christmas gifts. Like you drew names out of a hat, but you had a relative idea of what to get the person because you kind of knew yeah, them. There was like right. eight of y'all, right? Yeah, we used to do some of that. And now there's, you know, 38 kids <laughs> and all their kids' kids. And it's like now it's just basically become everybody calls the person's spouse or the person they know that's in contact with that person and says, what do they want? 
And then that person goes to the person and says, what do you want? And then the, the chain feeds back and then everybody buys that gift. And I'm just like, in my mind, for me as an outsider, this isn't my family. It doesn't matter, right? Do whatever the fuck you want. But as an outsider, I'm like, this is missing the fucking point at this point. Mm. Like the point was to do something that connected us. And now basically everybody's just spending a hundred dollars on themselves the long way. <laughs> like right. why don't we do something different like a white elephant or just something fun or nothing at all or whatever like i don't know it just seems such a weird tradition to hold on to when it doesn't feel like it's really making any logical sense at this point except people are having gifts shipped to the wrong house and then transporting them all to this place in hagerstown so we can give them to each other yeah <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, that reminded me at, at my mom's side of the family Christmas party. So it used to be, you know, everyone traded names and you got one of these other cousins, nephews, whatever. And then people, I guess, got upset that they didn't feel like the values of the gifts were equal or and there was supposed to be a dollar amount. Anyway, so then it ended up. You just bought gifts for your own kid and took them to the party. And then Santa gave out right. the gift that you and I'm like now I feel like I'm just buying an extra gift for my own kid right (laughs) what's the fun in that (laughs) right right and so i guess that this is where like i think we need a way of reevaluating what we what works for us you know I, i think for so long we've just operated under this is the rules we've been given this is what we've been told it's supposed to look like so this is what i do to try to reach a level of connection and acceptance in my society but it's not feeling good and it doesn't make any sense and it looks all stupid. And how do we reevaluate that from like a better perspective? And I don't know, maybe we start with like, what did your family look like growing up and how has it changed for you? Cause mine definitely doesn't look like it did growing up. I barely talk to my family. Yeah. And I got to say, so some of these family get togethers, at least in my, cause I know people's are different, but in my family's experiences, like they're, even though there is a lot of like alcoholism and stuff in the families, these events weren't usually centered around drinking, especially the Christmas one. So it was usually pretty healthy and safe. Like as a kid, I remember it being a good, really fun time to go and like see all my cousins. But the difference back then as compared to now is like we all grew up around Baltimore city Mm -hmm. in Hamden where we would see each other more than just this once or twice a year. Right. So this was just a get an excuse to like get together with a bunch of people that you already had relationships with to have a big party that was fun and mm-hmm. centered around food and gifts and all this the spirit of the holiday. But now it's different because it's like we went to Westminster and it's, you know, for us a two hour ride right. and you know, then some of my other cousins it's a long ride and my you know, one of my aunts is really old and kind of sickly now, so she doesn't come, and then none of her kids come, and, you know, we were the only people there for my family at all this year, and it's it's just like, okay, this is actually kind of sad and depressing. <laughs> like, you know, like half the family's not even coming anymore, and like Santa Claus, you know, gave out the gifts, and there were three kids, you know, hmm. which I could show you this picture from probably eight or ten years ago, and it's a hundred people, easy, right, hundred right. people, you know, and I bet you yesterday was 30. So it's like, what are we hanging on to this for? I mean, I know why we went. So for me, it gets into assessing my values. What are we doing this for? Right. You know, and I had asked ourselves that, is this worth putting in this effort? And like with us, we talked about it with our kids on the way home and, uh, you know, after we left and. We were expressing to them, like, we really appreciated that they would go out of their way because my kids are adults. They could easily say, oh, I have to work or I got something else going on or I can't make it. And we wouldn't force them to, you know, they're not obligated to. And uh, they still go. They sing the Christmas songs. They do the stuff they're supposed to do. They hang out all day, you know, because it's a two hour ride there and three hours at this thing and a two hour ride home. And so we just talked about the values of like supporting my aunts and in remembrance of like my mom, you know, there was a lot of that, like just remembering, you know, they called her nanny, you know, and, and remembering her and why we do it is to remember and support her. And we talked about her a little bit and, 
you know, seeing my aunts and cousins and, you know, it was the spirit of like trying to stay connected to family. So it felt like the right thing to do yesterday, but there's definitely been other times where it has not felt like that at all. I I think that's part of like what has happened for me is that in that kind of reevaluation, right? So one, uh, just, and again, this, this thing, this, my wife's family's celebration is like a, a clear thing for me to look at because in my life growing up, there's nothing like that. We don't, I don't have an experience where I went anywhere to celebrate for multiple days at all. Like that's not what I'm, I know. So like my experience was really more like that. We traveled to wherever we had to, whether it was half an hour, an hour, two hours, whatever. We stayed for two to three hours and then you get the hell out of there. And that was like all you could tolerate of people, according to my dad. (laughs) Um, So that's what I got. Right. Um, And just this idea of like her experience with it versus mine, like she has this nostalgia and this recall of these fun times at Christmas gatherings with these people. And they used to be closer and they used to get together more often when the the grandmother, the matriarch of the family was alive. And like now for a guy like me who came into the family towards the end of that experience, like I see these people once or twice a year. And The only conversations I know how to have with people I see once or twice a year are the kind of fucking hate. How you been? How's the weather? How's your job? All that bullshit. Like, I want to talk with people who I talk with frequently, and we can talk about deeper shit, hence why I do this podcast, and we don't talk about the weather. Um, and And I guess it's like I'm trying to explain to her this feels different for us, like... You're going in feeling a feeling a connection and all this, and I'm feeling like I'm almost under attack at all times trying to answer <laughs> these questions about how I've been, and that's stressful for me. So, did you want to add anything about Caroline? You I'm ain't like said shit yet. Away. I know Caroline's here. She hasn't said a word. It's hard to get a word in with you guys. Oh, you guys I knew she was going to say that. You guys are just. You know. I'm not taking that one on. I left some <laughs> space a couple of times, and she didn't jump in. So really? I ain't owning that. No, one, I, don't, yeah. I, don't I looked at you. I just stared at you before I the know, last one. But but you didn't like. You didn't go. I know I didn't go. Okay. But because I, I, because I guess I kind of feel like I'm like I don't know, like I'm gonna change the subject away from what you guys are. Do you, you guys are do talking you not about. have input about? No, I do. Oh, I but feel like this... I think it's different. I think. No, I think That's yours perfect. is relevant. Yeah. Add it, please. I mean, so for me, I grew up in like a very small family. My dad had two brothers, but one lived across the country. And the other one had two kids that were 15, 20 years older than me and my sister. Gotcha. Um, And then my mom had no siblings. So there was really no extended family, especially once the elderly, you know, Mm -hmm. one started to die off. So um, when Matt and I got married, he had, you know, he had three cousins and he had his sister and everybody had significant others. So there was like an extended, he had aunts and uncles and. So I loved that, like being able to be a part of like a bigger extended family. And these were people that I would only see a couple of times a year, but they were people that I had developed relationships with. And what you're laughing. Well, my wife reminded me recently that when I originally the first few years of being introduced to this Sullivan Christmas thing in this big family, (laughs) I too loved it and appreciated all this love and acceptance that was going on. And I, I was just laughing to myself. I was like, man, Caroline, be grateful you didn't get that long enough to hate it. <laughs> I mean, I had it for eight years. That long? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was thinking like six. And even six still, I have it to an extent. I mean, mm. there, um, when Matt passed, I stopped getting invitations to Christmas Day, which was the smaller, just um, nuclear family thing. But I still as they are happening, which they happen less, these bigger Christmas celebrations, I do get invited. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm actually missing it this year because I'm, I'm going, I'm traveling for Christmas, um, which is a bummer. Like I would have liked to have gone because it would be nice to see people and connect. But these are people that I've known for years, not ever spent tons of time with. Um, On the flip side of that, my, So my sister's been traveling for Christmas the last couple of years. And so I end up, now that I'm single, just going to my dad's house um, and then celebrating Christmas Day with my dad's wife's family, which these are people that, I mean, when I went to that last year, 
I'd say 60 to 70% of the people there I'd never met before. Um, and then the people I had met, aside from my dad and his wife, I'd probably only met, you know, once yeah. or twice. Mm. Um, it was not fun. No. Right. It no. was, it was, I mean, and not that there was anything wrong with the celebration, no, no. but to be in that situation where, you know, I, I'm single, I don't have kids, mm. everyone else is there with their significant others and their kids and, um, I don't know most of these people. Um, I opted not to do that this year. So, uh, I'm sorry, what are you doing? Well, Go ahead. N- yeah, I mean, so I was just going to say, so I'm traveling mm-hmm. for the holidays or, you know, I'm, I am I planned a trip and I'm just going, me and my dogs, and I'm going to ski on Christmas. Hmm. Like, I'm going to do something I want to do that'll make me hopefully happier than what last year brought. Um so can I just ask a quick question? Do you feel like it was the, I mean, not to put down any of the people, was it the people or the no. environment? I think it's the circumstances. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. to just be surrounded by everybody with their significant others and children when I don't have that. Mm. And they're not people that I have a connection with to begin with. Yeah. It just was kind of like a big, casted a big bright light on the things that are going on in my life right now that mm. don't make me okay. particularly happy. So, okay. And uh, one thing I, that felt similar for me, um, there were some years I was trying to be more included in family, more inclusive in family. I don't know how I want to say that, but like basically my father's siblings all moved and spread apart and they, you know, didn't really show up for him. And I don't really do a whole lot of reaching out to them. I guess if they were to ever say hi, I'd say hi, but I don't really talk to them. So that's that. My mother's side, her siblings ha- were older and have all passed away by now, um, unfortunately. So she was going to some Christmas stuff with like her, I guess, nieces and nephews, really. Um, her siblings' kids. So I was starting to go. We had one that was in Towson that was just like her family members. And then one that was one of her family members and then her spouse's family, too. So we went for a few years trying them out. The one that was like just our family felt really nice and intimate. The other one felt really, really fucking awkward. And like, again, it's not that this guy's family was fucking weird or nothing. I mean, maybe I have no idea, but just the awkwardness of like all these fucking people I've never seen before. And it's not like I'm mingling because I'm not a mingling kind of guy. And I don't really want to have those awkward conversations like that shit feels miserable for me. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's about the people. It's just not a situation I wanted to go to. So I stopped. But. I think there's a I think there's a difference between you and I too though which is like I don't mind that. You know, I don't mind going into a situation and having small talk and meeting people. I think, you know, if I envision that situation that I was in last year and I had the same thing as everyone else, which was like the partner and the family, I think I would have had a great time. Mm-hmm. I think it was really just that it was casting that light on like mm-hmm. I'm the only other single person here besides like an 80 year old widow like, yeah. like it's, and see yeah. i grew up both sides of my mm-hmm. parents families were big so my dad had seven brothers and sisters and my mom had seven brothers and sisters and both sides of the family at least when we were kids did big get together mm-hmm. and i was close with all those aunts and uncles and there was Multiple times a year they would get together. But we, again, we all lived, like, geographically lived in the same areas. So we saw them more than just at these times. And so it felt like getting together with, like, family that you knew, whereas now it's getting away from that, you know. And it's like even maintaining just a relationship with even my brother. It's like he moved to Florida, and now since he's moved down there, like... I don't think he listens. I hope not. But like he's put zero effort into maintaining a relationship with us. And I I put some, (laughs) you know, initiation into trying to maintain a relationship. But it finally took, you know, my wife pointing out to me. She's like, look, you can't have a relationship with somebody that does not reciprocate. And, you know, because like when he first moved down there, like we took one of our summer vacations and went down and spent it down there to visit with him and his kids and, you know, spend time with them. When he comes up here, he doesn't even call us to get together with us. It's like it might happen as a side note if my sister all invites us to her house on the same day. But he doesn't like call me and say, hey, I'm coming up on this day. You know, do you want to try to get together for dinner? Like, 
So it's like, well, fuck, that's my brother. And then I feel like shitty. Like I'm supposed to like, ah, oh, I need to have a better relationship mm. with my brother. Mm-hmm. And I'm sad that I don't. And, you know, so now I'm just like, eh, I, I don't know. I still, I feel a little sad about it, but I don't take on any obligation from that. And I'll still, you know, shoot him a text on his birthday, birthday, just like I would any other friend or common acquaintance. But we don't have like a closeness or a connection Whereas there's guys I see at my home group every week that I feel a much closer connection with that I would probably rather hang out with around Christmas than him at this point. Well, and I, and I think maybe for me, this is one of those things I always try to look back like, what does our DNA say from long, long ago and still? And like, how does that look different now? And I think previously like yeah your family was your fucking community that was the only people in your neighborhood we were all related at that point almost and like yeah like you said your experience of having all those siblings for your parents and like cousins in the neighborhood i grew up in a neighborhood where most families had that and i was the fucking outsider that wasn't known or wasn't like the third generation friend of a cousin of this other family or whatever like it was all these family alliances. And even though my family wasn't super spread out yet, I mean, they're way more spread out now, but like they were spread out enough where we didn't see them a whole lot, mm-hmm. you know? And so I don't have that feel of like, oh, these are my people. This is my tribe. And what I have seen is generally uh, as those connections faded, like it faded in both directions and nobody seems to, there doesn't seem to be a problem with that. So I'm all right with it. Like yeah. I put, effort into what gives me a reward in life and like that's where i need to really and and presently reestablish and reevaluate all my relationships you know from my marriage on down like is this providing the reward it was supposed to because if not why am i keep putting all this effort into this shit yeah i agree i mean i i I mentioned those cousins that were 15 or 20 years older than than i when their father died we pretty much stopped seeing them and their family and I've been fine with that. I mean, you know, like yeah. if they're not making an effort, I'm not going to make an effort. I invited both of them to my wedding and my female cousin came, which was it was really nice to see her. Um, but then nothing really happened mm. since then mm. until this year. We my dad coordinated with the female cousin and we all met in Ocean City. And again, it was nice. It was nice to see them. But it's really not going to happen again. Yeah. I haven't seen my male cousin, her brother, 15 years, 18 years. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, yeah. as a guy who always feels like there's too many obligations and pressures and stresses on, hanging over my fucking head, I'm glad that the only real person in my family that I have to do anything with is my mom. That's it. My mom, my wife, my kids. After that, like... I. There is nobody else that I feel obligated to. There's a couple family members I talk to here and there. That's it. And that feels great for me because I don't know. And and I, and it would feel probably way different if I had those close connections. If I'd grown up, if I had the cousins, if I had that what felt like a a friendship with somebody in my family, but I don't even know any of them. Yeah, and and so maybe <laughs> oddly this is a thing I'm putting back on myself. And I say that because we were talking about like this year um we have no plans at christmas it's just us and our immediate family gonna be home and there's a part of me that's like oh that's great and then it's like oh i feel like we need to be getting together with people Mm. (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. i don't know it's weird i'm like why do i feel like i need to be getting together with people why can't i just sit home and watch football and do nothing you know all we talked about (laughs) so maybe this is a thing we were talking about too of like starting a new christmas tradition where as a family we're like maybe maybe we just start a christmas tradition um and of course, we do usually go look at Christmas lights. We ride around, look at Christmas lights and yeah. stuff like that. We did but, some of that. You know, <laughs> yeah. So we're trying to figure out: uh, is this a year we start a new Christmas Day tradition that isn't that's doing something fun that we all want to do? Yeah. No, that's awesome. We I were like Caroline's about, skiing idea. That yeah. sounds awesome. <laughs> well, we were talking about going like tubing or something later in the week, and and that's what I'm trying to. Yeah, taking my brain from saying this is the right special way to make Christmas meaningful, which is you go to these things and you see these people. To what would feel like it would make this special and meaningful for the people right here that actually matter to me, because that's what I want to do. Like these, this is what matters. The people yeah. I see regularly, the people I feel connected to. And that's what I'm doing. 
I, you know, it's like I'm thinking like, what, what do I want to do? What's gonna feel good? Yeah. What's gonna make me happy? And I, so I made a decision that the options in front of me weren't going to make me happy. So I'm taking a hard left. I'm doing something else. And am I gonna be happy being all alone on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? Aside from my dogs, I don't know. I hope I'll be happier than I was last year. I will say this. Uh, conceptualizing it ahead of time as will I be happy being all alone is probably not going to contribute to you finding right, happiness. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. And see, that, but I do the same thing. That's what I mean. Like, oh, we're going to be all alone on Christmas, just me and my family. And like looking at that as there's something wrong with it. And there's not something. Like, it's just... Like, why can't that be okay? Why do I feel like I got to put these pressures on that I need to be more, you know, or that I need more than huh. what I have? I wonder if that brings us to this thing I've been thinking about. And maybe y'all can say if it doesn't and we can just not go there. <laughs> um, this idea that we get ahead of ourselves and decide what we want before we have the stuff to even think about doing it, I guess. Um, I know that sounds fucking stupid. Like... <sighs> Like the idea in our head is that the right way to be is that we're supposed to be coupled up on Christmas Eve originally. And we go into the world trying to find the person to fit this thing we think is the right way to be. And it feels backwards because I feel like I'd rather just be living my life and be like, hey, it's Christmas Eve. Cool. Hi, Billy. Hi, Caroline. And then if I meet a person that I want to be around more, then saying, oh, man, how cool would it be to spend Christmas Eve with this specific person because I like them. Right. And I feel like we just got the concept in our head of a position to fill first. And then we're just seeking the world to cram anybody into it. And I, I feel like we're doing this in a lot of ways. Well, and then I think, of course, too, the opposite of that, like how many people are with someone with Christmas where they're like, I wish I was not with this motherfucker on Christmas. <laughs> you know? like, that is very true. I wish I could be out doing something else. I have been but, there. Uh, now, interestingly, I, so in some of the, you know, counseling stuff I've been doing, I realize that I do that in a lot of areas of my life. Like I have preconcept, preconceptions or roles or ideas about this is what marriage is supposed to look mm -hmm. like and it fits in this box. And this is what job is supposed to look like and it fits in this box. And this is what best friend is supposed to look like and it fits in this box. And if I don't have that person to fill that best friend role, I feel like something's missing. Mm -hmm. Even though I have a bunch of relationships with a bunch of people, no one's filling this preconceived role that I've written out, you know, with mm -hmm. these check boxes. And so then I feel like I'm inadequate in my life because I haven't met these check boxes. But they're all shit that I've created in my own head. They're right. not anything, you know, that someone told me, oh, you don't have a best friend. Like, it's right, shit that right. I've decided for myself to feel bad about. <laughs> well, it's even like you talking about, man, I wish I, I think this Christmas Day thing, I might feel bad. and Like, I'm supposed to be going out right. to connect and do things. And it's like. We get the idea of that's what it's supposed to be, and then we'll go visit fucking random strangers that we barely know to, to fill our yeah. need, as opposed to understanding, like, if you have people in your life that you really want to go connect with on Christmas, go do that. Yeah, and if or, not, then that's not the thing. Or being so stuck there, like Caroline said, go on ski, and I'm like, fuck, we can <laughs> jump in the car and go skiing on Christmas right. Day. Like, that sounds fucking awesome. Right, right. right. <laughs> you know, but I'm so stuck in what I think it's supposed to be and what yeah. it's supposed to look like that I miss opportunities for better things. Hmm. Hmm. Where else do we, do we do that idea? Is it all of our lives? Are we... I do it everywhere because I'm huh. a control freak and that's my way of having control over everything. I mean, that's part of my therapy stuff, what I'm learning about myself, because then I'm not happy at my job because it doesn't meet the right check boxes. And I'm not mm -hmm. happy in my marriage because it doesn't meet the check boxes and my kids aren't meeting these check, you know, so mm -hmm. everywhere. No one's going to meet all these fictitious check boxes of what I think perfection is supposed to look like you know has has hallmark ruined it has hallmark <laughs> sold us on the idea that this is what christmas eve like really like not just hallmark obviously but our whole movie media industry like why is christmas eve supposed to be this one particular thing like i well christmas is supposed to be when you meet a random stranger and 
fall in love in a at small first town. sight. Yeah, in a, yeah. I mean, that's that's the Christmas they, movie. They don't thing, abduct right? you. I thought it was I about eating dinner at a Chinese night. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I saw one one time where somebody got a, I think it was tuberculosis, but they called it something different. Which yeah. consumption? Consumption. Yeah, mm-hmm. somebody got consumption in like the eighteen hundreds. Well, funny enough, we did actually get physical. stuck eating Christmas dinner at a Chinese restaurant one year. <laughs> well, see, it didn't come from nowhere. No, we went up to Massachusetts to visit Leona. We didn't really plan out like Christmas dinner, and then we we're like, "Oh, what are we gonna do for Christmas?" And everything was closed except for the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> this one still fascinates me because I didn't do Christmas dinner. I didn't yeah. like that's not a thing to me. So every time I hear about the turkey or the ham on Christmas, I'm like, "What?" <laughs> People do what? I guess for me where a lot of that started was my mom. So she grew up in a really abusive and neglectful household. And for her, uh, materialism was a big thing in her life because she grew up with nothing. So when we were kids, we kind of got spoiled and got a lot of things. Same with my dad. She had gotten out of that situation. And like Christmas, the first year my wife came to Christmas at my parents' house, she was like, Oh my God, I've never fucking seen anything like that. There was like piles of presents for like not just us, but then all the grandkids. And mm. I mean, my mom probably spent thousands of dollars at Christmas. Oh my dear and, Lord Jesus. You know, there was piles of presents for all the kids. And my wife was like, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> you know, but that was a big deal to my mom was like everybody getting together on Christmas and like my sister and her kids and us and our kids and my brother and his kids. And when she was alive, like it was pretty obligatory because if you didn't come, you weren't getting shit. Like she wasn't shipping that shit to your house. Like you, if you weren't there, you didn't get your stuff. (laughs) So a funny story just that, that you reminded me of, uh, we went stocking shopping last night, my wife and I, and like, uh, First of all, we spent four hundred and fifty dollars on stocking stuff. Yeah. This is fucking ridiculous. Oh, I thought you meant the actual stock. No, 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 <laughs> the stuff to go in them. And I cannot believe we spent that much, which is insane. Talking about your thousands of Christmas presents or thousands of dollars. Um, but driving there, we saw three different houses that we drove past. That, uh, like your wife's perception of your mom in that moment, I looked at all three of them and thought, yeah, that's diagnosable. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's definitely a mental health disorder going on with that many things in your fucking yard that light up. Oh, God, yes. And don't get me wrong. I fucking love it. Like oh, I, I love it. I, I'm doing that in my house. Slowly. Oh dear God! Put I'm as many as up. you can. I will look <laughs> yes. at all of them. I don't care. But yes, that's diagnosable, and there's yeah. an issue going really? on. Oh you think fuck so? yes. Oh God, so that's you drama. Don't think it's just people that just... hell no. Oh, I think it's fun. So this year, you know, we've been. I've been slowly adding like Christmas lights each year, trying to figure out how to do them where they don't look like shit and stuff like that. <laughs> and so Jen's like, "Well, what is your vision for?" I'm like, "I don't have like uh, my vision is fucking like." What's that? Uh, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, where the fucking guy's house is all lit up and you can see it from space. Like, that's my vision. <laughs> She's like, "Well, no, not that." Because I asked her, I'm like, "How much money can I spend on Christmas lights this year?" <laughs> that's hilarious. We kept it simple this year, thankfully. Um, I've done nothing this year. Perfect. Yeah. Literally perfect. nothing. I'm not. I didn't put a tree up. I didn't. I was gonna put my wreaths on the windows, and then I didn't get around to it because I have like solar powered um wreaths with like white lights on them which is nice for my you know my old looking house but i didn't get around to it and at this point i'm like what's the point Christmas is in... there's some days left yeah but anyway but i won't be there too <laughs> yeah. so well i will boo your house when i ride by and then also <laughs> applaud you for taking care of yourself and not decorating <laughs> yeah, if you right. didn't feel like it <laughs> Have you found that listening to the Recovery Sort of podcast has helped you in your day-to-day journey? Please share the message of compassion and well-being with the loved ones in your life. Connect with us more at recoverysortof.com, Facebook, Instagram, threads, YouTube, and other social media spaces. And have a great week.